Today we're going to be repowering a 1985 Snapper rear riding mower. Currently has an 8 horsepower engine. I'm going to put a much bigger engine on. I'm also going to add electric start which is currently not available and I'm going to give you a quick review of the engine that I picked up. Uh, it's a pretty big project but I'm going to try to compress it so we get right into it. Okay the first step is to we're going to loosen these bolts right here and take the engine off. I'm going to detach the gas tank and drain it safely into a gas can. Gas line's right here. The nicest thing about a snapper is the gas can comes straight up like this. So it'd be easy for us to drain it wherever we want. And I've got a pair of vice grips on there and that'll stop it from leaking. I'm gonna use another set of pliers. Let's pull it off. Okay, okay, there. My goal is to not spill any. So now I'm just gonna pick this up. I put the hose inside the gas can. Make sure the hose is all the way in there. Release and let gravity do the work. Next, we have to remove the linkages here and the kill wire. Just using a 12 millimeter. Okay, it's a 14 millimeter. Okay, so we're just going to remove these three bolts holding the tire together. This is a three quarter inch socket. I'm just going to take them off. I'm going to put some bricks under the tractor to stabilize it as we remove the uh, wheel. Now we have full access to the side panel. There's half inch bolts holding it. Just, that's where they are. Okay, so now I rotated the plate up. Now I can get my hands in there better. I'm going to remove the belt. Okay, as you can see now I have access to the pulley and shaft. I'm now going to remove these, these two bolts. new engine. Let's check it out. Okay, see the shaft of my old engine? If you look, you can see where the clean versus dirty is. I'm going to measure that dirty area up top and make sure that my other shaft I put at the same height. So I put my tape there. Okay, now this disc goes on like this. So I've marked the location. Make sure the two notches line up. There's a notch here, and there's a notch here. I'm lining them up so it's exactly where it was. So I'm just going to take an Allen wrench to tighten those two. I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not, but the shafts were identical. Most of these shafts are the same. Now your key has to go in here. It goes right in there. So, this is where you got all the weight. Bolts line up perfect. Okay, now I'm just going to put the bolts on. So there's four of these we're just going to put on. Okay, at this point it's very important to put oil in, so that's what we're going to do. The worst that you could do is blow an engine. There's your dipstick. Just gonna get some oil in here. Throttle cable on a snapper. Pretty simple. Just goes straight in. Okay, so 5 16th inch socket. I'm gonna pull the wire all the way back. Just pull backwards towards yourself. Yeah, full range of motion right there. Looks like it has an auto choke, so that's nice. I just made sure that this gets its full adjustability like it's supposed to. Goes back on here. Okay, so I'd, all you gotta do then is tighten this hose clamp. This is great because there's really no obstructions. I have a handy dandy chart which I will use. This is from Briggs & Stratton. Okay, I'm done with a new solenoid. Part number 7-01861-1. The ground is right here. Basically what I'm saying is when I bolt it into the frame, the solenoid becomes grounded. So let's start with that. So there's my solenoid there. And you can see my ground wire is attached right here to this leg right there. See the wire come down? But we're starting with the ground. So the ground goes
It's being grounded out against my frame. I now have a common ground wire that we're going to be able to share with others. And then this goes down to the left leg of the solenoid, which is also a ground. Okay, next is this switch. Okay, you don't have to really understand the theory of this switch, but they are labeled. Let me show you a piece of paper. This is ground. G is ground. A1 is accessory 1. L is lights. S goes to solenoid. That's auxiliary 2. Uh, magneto is M, and B is battery. Now again, these are labeled on the switch. Okay, so I picked up this wire at Napa. It's got four wires in one. I'm going to use it to kind of make things a little bit easier. Okay, I just picked these up. This is just going to help me connect to the terminals. You can use any wire you want, but I went with Napa. I'm going to use green as my ground. It's easy for me to remember. You can do any color you want. I'm just going to strip a little bit. Just gonna crimp it. Okay, so I run the wire to the terminal that has a letter G. And now I'll show you the other end. So I just ran my green wire to my common ground right here. I'm gonna cap this later. I don't know how many more times we're gonna be tapping into this, but I'm just doing a common ground to make everything clean. So this is the bottom right side of the solenoid there. I had to file it a little bit so my connector fits, but not much. This goes to your ignition key where it's labeled S for solenoid. I decided to go with a white wire. So the white wire goes from the S on the ignition switch back to that little tab right there to that little tab on the bottom of the solenoid. Okay, this next one's really easy. From the right terminal on the solenoid straight to the starter. There's a terminal on the starter. I'll show you in a second. Right side of starter solenoid. It's the bottom of my starter. You have to remove your cover and you have to find the magneto wire. Find the wire coming out of it. And go to the magneto position in the ignition. Okay, so this green wire here is running to the letter M down there. And it goes all the way back. I'm going to trace the line from my magneto right there, which is black for some reason. As you can see, I spliced my green wire that goes to the letter M on my ignition. I spliced it to the black wire that goes directly to my magneto. Okay, next we're going to connect our fuel solenoid. If you don't have a fuel solenoid, please disregard this. Okay, now if you do have a fuel solenoid, you can do what I did. I decided to choose a yellow wire and I connected onto auxiliary one that's labeled A1 on the ignition switch. And the yellow wire simply comes from there to the back of the battery mower right there. I attached it to this gray wire because this gray wire goes to my fuel solenoid. Okay, this is my fuel solenoid right here. There's a gray wire coming out. There's also a black wire. Now, the black wire is grounded to the body. The gray wire just kind of pops out at the back end of the engine. So what we're gonna do is go from this fuel solenoid here, which is gray wire, and we're gonna attach it to our yellow wire. And again, our yellow wire is gonna run to the ignition switch labeled L. Okay, so my yellow wire, uh, which goes to the L in the ignition, taps into the fuel solenoid, which is gray, and I'm using a yellow cap. There's a connector that comes out of Briggs & Stratton. There's two wires coming out. The one wire is fatter than the other. You can clearly see it's bigger. It has a, see that bulge? That's the diode. That is going to be your alternator or stator, basically. It's uh, what charges your battery. So this is going to go to the battery. We'll talk about that more in a minute. This other one here can power your light. So if you had lights and you wanted them to run all the time, you could just simply run this to your light. And there you have it. And if you wanted to add a switch, you could add an on-off switch. But the nice thing about this is it would only run while your engine's running. I don't have any lights, so I'm just going to cap it off right now. 
Okay, so I've successfully terminated it. I'm gonna put some tape to make sure it never comes off. Now we're gonna wire our fuse in. I'm gonna go with 30. It gives you protection, enough protection, but it's not gonna blow like real easily. Okay, so I have the red end which goes to the stator. I connect it in line to an inline fuse, the yellow thing there. At this point we're gonna have battery power. The red wire that goes directly to your battery is gonna go straight to the left part of the solenoid. However, this particular cable, I got it off of an old mower. It's nice because it has another power cable. So the hot wire is now connected from the, directly from the battery to the left side of the solenoid. I'm now running a completely separate red line. It's right here. It's going to go directly in to the letter B for battery. Okay, so I have the red end which goes to the stator. I connect it in line to an inline fuse, which is the yellow the yellow thing there, inline fuse. The other end, I attached all three. So what I got here is the two hot wires and then the black wires, part of the fuse. And remember the one, the darker red wire goes to the ignition. The lighter red wire goes down here to the left side of the solenoid. The red wire going from that ignition module. It comes to this junction right here. It comes right here where the two reds join into an inline fuse. The inline fuse goes directly to the Briggs and Stratton clip, which eventually feeds into the stator. And again, noting the diode right here, which is wider. Um, and then the other red wire starts here, it's lighter, runs down to the left side of the solenoid, right there. Okay, now in terms of safety switches, the snapper is nice because it has a foot pedal for your blade, so if you fall off, the blade turns off, so there's no need to be worried about the blade kill switch. However, if you are concerned about a seat pressure switch, I'll show you very quickly how you could wire that. Okay, so the idea here is that if there's pressure on the seat, the kill switch will stay down, which basically allows it to run. So if you fall off of the seat, what happens is, as you can see here, it releases. So let me show you that up close. So at this point, your mower is running. When you get off the seat, the switch comes up and it kills it. Let me show you how to wire that. Okay, then I'm going to fire up the engine. I apologize for how loud it is, but it has no muffler at this time, but we're going to get that next. It died, so that works. So the biggest hurdle in putting a new engine on a rear riding mower snapper is that the muffler is going to hit the bag catcher assembly. When you get a bigger engine, that's one of the drawbacks. The biggest obstacle is this bagger. That red bar is already in the way. Remove that first. Okay, just loosening it was enough to get this out. So now we have full access to the muffler area. Okay, so this is how it comes, the muffler. But it's missing two critical bolts, which I'm really surprised it doesn't come with. Okay, so the, you have to get these bolts. I'm sorry, but you really got to get these ones. Uh, these are stainless so that it will not rust away inside your exhaust. Also had to buy this socket here, part number 622336. That's at Home Depot. That's a 316th inch hex bit socket. And it's a 3 8 drive. Okay, so the first thing you have to do, make sure that you have your washer 
it'll fight you. <laughs> just trust me, it's very hard to do this. So now you put the notch then, it just slides in, and now you can actually thread the second one, making sure that your gasket is in there. You just tighten it. You don't want to over tighten it. Okay, so now get your gasket. Goes on here. Get your muffler bracket. Get your long bolt. Just make sure your gasket's lined up perfectly and then tighten it down. Okay, now I have to extend the bagger backwards just a little bit so it doesn't catch on fire. So it's kind of important. I purchased four two inch stainless steel 516 thread coarse. And then I got two more that are just three quarters. And then I bought a couple quarter inch stainless steel screws. Length is not really important. That's just for my heat shield. Underneath you can see I have lock nuts, lock nut washers. I'm using a double lock nut system. I also bought a heat shield. This is actually, I just got this at Home Depot. Okay, I got my Ryobi drill, which I review on my channel. I got my 5 16 inch bit that I reviewed on my channel. So I'm just going to run this right through here, like that. Run this through here, like that. My one lock nut here. I'm going to do another one this direction. Okay, I measured to make sure it's all square. So this bolt's going to go in the bottom here. Okay, so that's how I have it. And you just uh, tighten and adjust it as needed, and then you basically can space the bagger to any length you want away from the muffler. So all I did was add one more bolt right where my finger is here. I just wanted there to be some air in between the heat shield and the muffler. I did a quick test a minute ago but it's time to, to do the real thing and see if it can cut a small patch. 